right, guys. So hopefully you have had a chance to work through two through four. Um, number two, I'm going to, going to explain in detail. For number three and number four, I'm just going to reveal the answers. Or actually, for number three, I'm just going to reveal the answers. Four, I'll go over also because it's a little different. So <clears throat> for number two, I know that angle seven right here is 134 degrees. So the first angle that I would probably fill in is this adjacent angle, angle 8, because if we connect those, they are supplementary. So we can take 180 minus 134, and that gives us 46 degrees for angle 8. So measure of angle 8 would be 46 degrees. And then if we look at angle 1, it is vertical to angle 7, so it's also going to have to be 134. Angle 2 is vertical to angle 8, so it's also going to be 46 degrees. All right, and then if we're just going in numerical order, angle 3 would be next. So angle 3, the relationship that I would probably use is either corresponding angles, because it's corresponding with angle 1. They're in the same place, but one's interior, one's exterior. So that would mean it has to equal 134 degrees. Or you could say that it's alternate interior with angle 7, and that would also make it 134 degrees because it would be congruent to both of those angles. So angle 3 is going to have to be 134. Angle 6 is alternate interior with angle 2. I meant to change color. Sorry about that. So angle 2 and angle 6 are alternate interior. They're both inside the parallel lines, but on opposite sides of the transversal. So they would have to be congruent. So if angle 2 is 46, that means angle 6 is going to have to be 46 degrees. And then angle 4 is vertical from angle 6. So it would also be 46 degrees. Angle 5 is vertical from angle 3. So it would have to be 134 degrees. So it's kind of like once you fill in one, the rest fall into place pretty easily. <clears throat> All right, number three is pretty much exactly the same. So for number three, I'm just going to reveal our answers. Angle one should have been 83. Angle two, 97. Angle three, 83. Angle four, 97. Angle six, 97 degrees. And angle seven, 83 degrees. So just go through and check those. You can ask your neighbor if you are confused about any of them, but it's pretty much worked exactly the same way as number one and number two. All right, for number four, we actually have two transversals in this problem. So we still have our set of parallel lines, which are W and V. So these are our parallel lines, but then we have two different transversals. We have one right here at line X, and then we have another one here at line Y. So I'm just going to take it one set at a time. First, I'm going to focus on this purple transversal. So they've told me that this angle right here is 59 degrees. So I'm just going to go through and fill in the ones that I can based on that. So if this angle right here is 59 degrees, it is supplementary with angle 7. So I can take 180 minus 59 to get angle 7, which is going to be 121 degrees. <clears throat> and then angle 6 is vertical with that 59, so it's also going to be 59 degrees. 5 is vertical with 7, so that would make it 121 degrees. And then for the ones closer to the top of our picture, like for angle 4, or actually let's do angle 3 first since it's numerical order. So angle 3, <clears throat> it is alternate interior with that 59 degrees, so that means it's also going to be 59 degrees. And then angle 4 is alternate interior with angle 5. They're both inside those parallel lines, opposite sides of the purple transversal. So that means they're going to be congruent. So angle 4 is also 121 degrees. And then angle 2 would be vertical to angle 3. So it's going to be 59 degrees. Angle 1 is vertical with angle 4, so it's going to be 121 degrees. 
Okay, now I'm going to switch to my other transversal. So for this red transversal, they've given me that this top angle right here is 104 degrees. So I'm going to pick an angle that is supplementary with it, which I would probably pick 8. It looks like my notes have 10 filled in there. So that's fine. We can create a supplementary angle right there. And then take 180 minus 104 degrees and get 76. So that means angle 10 is going to have to be 76 degrees. And then angle 10 is vertical with angle 8. So it would also be 76 degrees. And angle 9 is vertical with that 104. So it's also going to have to be 104 degrees. Okay, and then coming to the bottom half of our transversal. I'm just going to start with angle 11. So the two relationships I would probably look at is that either angle 11 is corresponding with angle 8 or it's alternate interior with angle 10. Either of those would make it congruent to angle 8 and angle 10. And we know both of those are 76 degrees, so that means angle 11 is also going to have to be 76. And then angle 12 is supplementary to it, or you could say that it is alternate interior with angle 9, so they would be congruent. Therefore, it is also 104 degrees. And then angle 13 is vertical with angle 12, so they're going to be congruent, so it's 104. Angle 14 is vertical with angle 11, so it's going to be 76 degrees. So that one is still pretty much the same, you just had two different transversals to work with. All right, looking ahead, for angle 5, or excuse me, not angle 5, but number 5, let's see, let's look at the angle that they gave us to start out with. It's this 38 degrees down here, and I see that I have these two sets of parallel lines, so M and N are parallel, and this is another one where I have two transversals. I have, obviously, this transversal L, but I also have this transversal right here because if we kept extending this line, it would pass through both of those parallel lines. So it's also a transversal. So let's look at our 38 degrees. <clears throat> what I notice first is that it's supplementary with that angle 7. So 180 minus 38 would give us 142 degrees. So that means angle 7 is going to be 142. Angle 8 is vertical with our 38 degrees, so it would also be 38. And then angle 9, it's also supplementary with that 38 degrees, or it's vertical to angle 7. So it's going to have to be 142 degrees. Okay, and then let's see. I'm going to look at angle 1 right here. So we've got these red parallel lines, and then I'm looking at this green transversal passing through them. If I mark angle 1, let's see, I'm going to mark it in blue. And I mark this 38 degrees. They're both inside the parallel lines, but opposite sides of the transversal. So they're alternate interior. So they're going to be congruent. That means angle 1 is going to have to be 38 degrees. And then for angle 2, it is going to be alternate interior with angle 7. So angle 2 is going to have to be the same thing as angle 7, which is 142 degrees. And I was wrong. Let's see, what makes that incorrect? Well, obviously, if Ms. Bites had looked at it better, angle 2 is acute, angle 7 is obtuse, so they are not going to be congruent. I am sorry, y'all. A little distracted. Okay, let's look at those again. So, let's switch gears. I know angle 1 is 38 degrees. Let's look at this orange transversal. So if I look at my orange transversal and I combine angle 1 and angle 2, they are alternate interior with this right angle right here. 
so that means they combine to equal 90 degrees because this angle would have to be congruent to this angle. So if you take 90 minus your 38 degrees that we know angle 1 is, then we can get the measure of angle 2. So 90 minus 38 would give us 52 degrees. So a measure of angle 2 is going to be 52. And then I'm still looking at this orange transversal. So first thing I see is that angle 2 is vertical with angle 5. So that means they're going to have to be congruent. So angle 5 is also 52 degrees. And I also see that angle 1 and angle 4 are vertical. So that means angle 4 is going to be 38 degrees. And then if I know that 1 and 2 combined are 90, and then I look at angle 3, all three of those angles are supplementary. They're forming this straight line. So if this half is 90 degrees, that means angle 3 is also going to have to be 90 degrees. And then the only one we have left is angle 6, but it is vertical to angle 3, so it would also be 90 degrees. So that one had a lot going on. We kind of had to think about a lot of different relationships in it. Okay. Look at your second page with me. This one is just bringing some algebra into the mix. So we've got to think about our relationships that we've learned about and then use our equations to figure out the missing value of x. So... On number one, first let's think about how these two angles are related. We've got a set of parallel lines, we've got a transversal. They are each on the outside of the parallel line, so they're going to be some kind of exterior angles, and they're on opposite sides of the transversal. So they are alternate exterior angles, and that means they're congruent. So if they're congruent, that means they're equal. So to find the value of x, I can take 8x plus 19 and set it equal to 139 and then just solve that equation to find x. So I'm going to subtract 19 first and get 8x equals 120, divide by 8. <coughs> so x should equal 15. Okay, I'm looking at my next problem. So... Think about how these angles are related. And to help me out, I'm going to kind of draw my arcs. So those angles, one is interior, one is exterior, but they're in the same spot. They look the same. So those are corresponding angles, which means they're congruent. So once again, to find my x, I can set 17x minus 45 equal to 108 since they are congruent. And then I would just solve this equation. So add 45 to both sides. Therefore, we have 17x equals 153. Divide by 17. So x would equal 9. All right, number three, looking at our angles, be careful these little arrows are pointing to the space that we have right here and right here. So it's kind of confusing since the expressions are written on the outside, but they're talking about these interior angles right here. So they're both inside the parallel lines. They're going to be interior, and they are on opposite sides of this transversal. So that is alternate interior, and we know those are congruent. So if they're congruent, that means they're equal. So if I'm trying to find x, I can set these two angles equal to each other. So I have 13x minus 43 equals 7x minus 1. And then add 43, or no, we're not ready to do that. we got to combine our variables first. So I'm going to subtract that 7x from both sides. 13x minus 7x would give me 6x minus 43 equals negative 1. Add your 43 to both sides, so we have 6x equals negative 42, or positive 42, excuse me. And divide by 6, sorry my box is acting crazy, so x is going to equal 7. Okay. 
right, number four, you, let's see, once again, we're pointing to these inside angles. So these are inside our parallel lines. That means they're interior, but this time they're on the same side of that transversal. <clears throat> so that means they are um, consecutive interior angles. Now remember, these are the only ones that are not congruent. Consecutive interior angles are supplementary. They add up to 180. So if I'm trying to find the value of x, I can add these two expressions together and set them equal to 180. So I have 6x plus 2 plus 11x minus 9 equals 180. And then combine our like terms. So 6x plus 11x would give us 17x. 2 plus negative 9 would give us negative 7. So I have 17x minus 7 equals 180. Add 7. So 17x equals 187. And then divide by 17. So x would equal 11. Alright guys, I want you to hit pause on your video and try number 5 and number 6 for me. Remember, think about those relationships first and then that will help you know whether you need to set your expressions equal to each other or add them up and set them equal to 180. Okay, so number five, those are, one is interior, one's exterior, they're in the same spot though, so they're corresponding, which means they're congruent, so we would set those two expressions equal to each other and solve that equation, we should have gotten x equals 19. For number six, both of these are inside the parallel line, so they are interior, but they're on the same side of the transversal, so that is consecutive interior again, which means they add up to 180. So I'm going to add up those two expressions, set them equal to 180, simplify, and solve. So we should have gotten x equals 13 for number 6. Okay, once again, I'm going to get you to hit pause. On your video and try number seven and number eight for me and then hit play when you're ready to check. All right so on number seven one angle is outside my parallel lines and so is the other so they're exterior angles and they're on opposite sides of the transversal so that's alternate exterior that means they're congruent so when they're congruent I'm going to set my expressions equal to each other so 17 minus x equals 10x plus 17. We're going to solve that equation. So x should have equaled 4. Number 8, we're pointing to these angles on the interior, but they're on opposite sides of the transversal. So that would be alternate interior angles, and they're congruent. So we're going to set those two expressions equal to each other. 15x minus 27 equals 11x plus 13. Solve and x would equal 10. All right, and then number 9, let's look at it together. So we've got that L is parallel to M, so these two lines are parallel to each other, and then angle C, B, E, so that's going here from C to B to E, so that's why I've filled in this space with 14x plus 17, so you can do that on your paper too. And then angle F, E, H, so going from F, to e to h, this space right here is 19x minus 23, so you can fill that in also. It wants us to find the measure of angle CBE, so that's going here from C to B to E, so it's talking about this 14x plus 17. So we're going to need to figure out what x is first, and then we can use that to figure out what our angle is. So looking at these two angles that they've given us, One's interior, one is exterior, but they're in the same spot. So that would make them corresponding angles, and they're congruent. So whenever they're congruent, we set our expressions equal to each other. So we have 14x plus 17 equals 19x minus 23. I'm going to subtract that 14x from both sides. So I have 17 equals 5x minus 23. Add my 23. So now I have 40 equals 5x, so x is going to equal 8. 
All right, and then I can use that value and substitute it back into this expression to figure out what the measure of angle CBE is. So instead of 14x plus 17, I'm going to have 14 times 8 plus 17. And then I'm going to multiply 14 times 8, and that gives me 112. And then 112 plus 17 would give me 129 degrees. So CBE would be 129. And that means also this other angle would be 129 degrees because they're corresponding and congruent. <coughs> Right, number 10, it tells us line C is parallel to line D and X, Y, V, so this space right here is 8X plus 11 and Y, V, W, this space right here is 12X minus 1. And we want to find Y, V, W, so we want to find that 12X minus 1. <clears throat> so these two angles are each inside the parallel line, so that makes them interior, but they're on opposite sides of the transversal. So they are alternate interior angles, and we know those are congruent. So I'm gonna set those expressions equal to each other. 8x plus 11 equals 12x minus one. Subtract 8x from both sides. So I would have, I don't know what I did here. So we would subtract 8x. That means I would have 11 equals 4x minus 1. Add 1 to both sides, so 12 equals 4x. And that means x is going to equal 3. Excuse my handwriting. I just used the mouse to do that. So x equals 3. So if x equals 3, I'm trying to find yvw. So they told us that yvw is 12x minus 1. So I'm going to substitute that 3 into my expression. So I have 12 times 3 is 36 minus 1 would give us 35 degrees. All right, guys, I want you all to hit pause and try number 11 and number 12 for me. And then hit play when you're ready to check. Right, so number 11, they've told us that these two lines are parallel. JKN is 11x minus 29 degrees, and MNK is 5x plus 17. Those two angles are both on the inside, and they're on the same side of the transversal, so that's consecutive interior. And they're not congruent, they add up to 180. So I'm going to take those two expressions, add them together, set them equal to 180, combine like terms, so I have 16x minus 12 equals 180, add 12, and then divide by 16, so x should equal 12. But that's not what the question asks us for, it asks us to find the measure of angle JKN, so we got to finish this out. So JKN is my 11x minus 29. So I've got to take 11 times 12 minus 29. Okay, and I'm doing this in my calculator right now. 11 times 12 gives me 132 minus 29. And that's going to give me 103. So JKN would be 103 degrees. Okay, and then number 12, J is parallel to K, so those two lines are parallel to each other. And then the measure of angle 2, they've told us, is 7X plus 13 degrees. And measure of angle 8 is 10X minus 44. We want to find each angle measure. So 
Oh, yeah. So we're finding all the angles, not just those two. So first of all, angle 2 and angle 8 are alternate exterior. So we can set those two expressions equal to each other because we know they're congruent. That will help us find x, and then we can fill in our angle measures. So subtract 7x from both sides. So I have 13 equals 3x minus 44. Add 44, so I have 57 equals 3x and then divide by 3, so x would equal 19. And then now that I know x equals 19, I can substitute that back into my expressions. So if I sub it into this one, 7 times 19 equals 133, and then plus 13 would give me 146 degrees, and that means angle 8 obviously is also 146. So I have angle 2 and angle 8 filled in. And then going across, I see that angle 1 would be supplementary with 146. So 180 minus 146 gives me 34 degrees. So angle 1 would be 34, and so would angle 3 because they're vertical. And then angle 4 is vertical with 146, so it's going to be 146. Angle 5 you can either look at it as it's also supplementary with our 146, or you could say it's alternate interior with angle 3. So that means it's also going to have to be 34 degrees. Angle 6 is going to have to be our 146. And then angle 7 will also have to be 34 degrees. So a little bit of work on that one, but it still wasn't too bad. <coughs> Okay, and then number 13, I want y'all to hit pause, try it real quick, and then press play. All I'm going to do is reveal the answers on it. Okay, so these were consecutive interior angles, which means they add up to 180. So we have 15x minus 1 and 8x minus 3. So I'm setting the, or adding those together, setting them equal to 180. When I simplify that equation, I get 23x minus 4 equals 180, so solve and x would equal 8. So then when I substitute that 8 back into my expressions, 15 times 8 is 120. 120 minus 1 would give us 119. And then 8 times 8 is 64. 64 minus 3 would give us 61 degrees. So angle 7 is 119 degrees. Angle 6 is 61 and then I can use those to fill in the rest. So <clears throat> I look and I see that angle 3 is also supplementary with angle 6. So that means it's going to have to equal the same thing as angle 7, 119 degrees. So angle 3 is going to be 119. And then I see that angle 2 is also supplementary with angle 7. So it must measure the same thing as angle 6. So angle 2 is also going to have to be 61 degrees. And then 1 is vertical with angle 7, so it's going to have to be 119. 8 is vertical with 2, so it's going to have to be 61. 4 is vertical with 6, so it has to be 61. And 5 is vertical with 3, so it has to be 119. Alright guys, you can feel free to keep these notes out. You do have some exit problems in Eduastic today. So just go to Eduastic, open the transversals exit problems, and complete those using your notes. Take your time on them. And then when you have submitted those, you can work on your math Excel for the rest of class. So I hope to see you all again on Monday. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Feel free to email me if you're confused about anything.